Hey everybody. So this is, uh, no, let's start again. I'm going to start over again. No, we're not going to start. No, we're going to start again. I'm in charge of No, no, we are going to start again. <laughs> so, so this is part two of the last progression of the nuke and package installation that we did. And because we ran into an issue, as you all have seen, and uh, we're now we're going to go through the options on what to do with this hive. So this is the nuke and it wants to swarm. So again, we're going to show you different options, what to do if you do have extra equipment, what to do if you don't have extra equipment, we're going to go through the whole gamut. So hopefully this will help you folks out that seem to be having some of the same issues that are occurring here. So let's get into it. So today, actually, for those of you who've been waiting on this, we are going to do a Damari split. So I know we have some members out there that were talking about that, and that's what we're going to demonstrate here today. All right, here we go. Okay, so what we do, we've gone through the hive, we did everything right. We had the brood chamber grew from one box to two boxes. As it grew up from here, we put our next box on. And we didn't put a queen excluder on. There's no excuse for the bees to want to swarm, but they do want to swarm. And so what we want to do is uh, we've got a few options of what, what, we can, what options we have for us. First of all, what we could do is cut out all the queen cells and cross our fingers and hope we've done it right. But we'll have to go in again and again and again to do it every week. Reason being is that unless we do something to change the bee's mode of operation, the cutting out queen cells um, would not, in its own right, be enough to stop them swarming in the long run. A swarm will never leave without another queen emerge, about to emerge from a queen cell. So in theory, if you cut out every single queen cell, then there will not be a swarm issued for about another week. But what will happen is, as soon as you close that hive up, they find they've got no queen cell. They still want to swarm, so they'll build another queen cell, and another one, and another one. And you go in there the following week, and you cut that out before the queen cells get big enough that the hive is ready to swarm. So cutting out queen cells is a way of postponing swarming, but unless you do something else, it's not necessarily going to stop the swarming because they're going to keep on trying. And the other problem is anyone who's cut out queen cells will know finding all the queen cells can be an issue as well. So if you miss one of those queen cells, you're going to get a swarm. And they're very good at hiding swarm they're cells. They're very good at hiding them. Yes. So that was one of the options. My cheating notes flew away. <laughs> and we're not going to edit that out either. We're, okay, we won't edit that out. <laughs> okay, the other option that we could do is we could split the hive. We could take advantage of the fact that we've got multiple queen cells in the hive and we can split two brood chambers, one containing the queen to one hive and one containing queen cells to the other hive. So we could split the hive and have two. Third option, we could take advantage of other colonies in the apiary. We could cut out all the queen cells but as we know, that won't be enough to stop the bees swarming. But take a look at what's sitting next to it. We've got a much smaller colony right next to it. So if we cut out all the queen cells from this colony, put it all back together, but then just simply swap the positions of these two colonies, now the field force from this big colony goes into the small one, and the field force from the small one goes into the big one. That means this colony has lost a whole load of bees. That is enough to stop swarming. And then you don't have to keep on going in cutting out queen cells. Now, that small hive's now got a big field force, it needs an extra super on it as well. So that's another way of doing it without losing the momentum within the apiary as a whole. It's just rearranging the workforce. Okay, another option. We could cut out the queen cells, and like we did with our um, package there, we could checkerboard the brood chamber. So. In this case, what we could do is put frames of foundation in between frames of brood comb in here. And we would need a third brood chamber, of course, to do this because we need somewhere to put the other brood. And that is sometimes enough to stop uh, swarming as well, having cut out the queen cells, because what you've done is reduce the density of population within the brood chamber. It's a probably going to work but it doesn't necessarily it doesn't always work it's something anytime you're trying to do with control this one you got to watch them carefully 
finally we're gonna do the, the, and there are more options as well you could split it make nukes you can do all sorts of things but the other option is in this particular case all I'm gonna do is try and stop the swarming but continue the colony growing and growing and growing and this is called the Damari method and what we're going to basically do is we're going to find the queen who's somewhere within these two, possibly up even in the honey super right now. We're going to take that queen. We're going to put her, confine her to the bottom brood chamber. We're also going to remove all of the other brood bar one frame from that brood chamber and put it higher up the hive. And now the queen is left in the area and, and she's going to be held down there with a queen excluder, which I've got to get. Anyway. <laughs> She's going to be held down there and there'll be just a single frame of brood with the queen and then lots of empty space. And what's going to happen is all the workforce that we're looking after the brood, they go up with the brood chambers. That reduces the density of bees around where the queen is laying eggs. She will now have all the room she possibly needs and the colony will recognize the queen needs more room and they will draw out any home foundation out there to make sure the queen has plenty of space. We will have to come back here a week later because the area that we've moved the brood to, because it's separated from the queen, sometimes they're gonna build queen cells. So next week, we're gonna have to go in here, despite the rain, and cut out all the, any queen cells that are developing in the moved brood chamber. But more of that when we actually do it. So let's actually get on with it. We've done a lot of introduction here. <laughs> um, We're going to give the bees plenty of smoke because this most certainly will uh, they don't like set this. the cat amongst the pigeons, as it were. Yes. They do not they like this. Leave. Well, they don't like it when you do it. Anymore. Well, no, they definitely don't like it when I do it. But I, I will tell you this, um, in doing this, this Damari method, this is for honey production. And of my one successful Damari, I just took over 100 pounds of honey off it um, yesterday. So it We've got does a lot work. more bees in, in the honey super than we had yesterday. They're getting up there. Yeah. I still don't think we've got much honey, and I still think it's a low probability of the queen being up here. But uh, still. Because we've got no chrome, no comb up here yet, we're not going to look for the queen in this part. So again, I'll put this over here. Now we're going to see if we can be lucky and find the queen yes. within a few few frames. Wouldn't that be a refreshing change? It would be. Remember, I'm with you though, Peter. So yeah, the okay. odds of that, uh, yeah. Curses. Yeah. Nothing like shooting in the foot before we even get started. <laughs> huh? well, if I didn't have bad luck, I wouldn't have any at all. So. Okay. Yeah. Nothing here. Still no queen. This is full of honey. This works much better if you've got a marked queen. <laughs> I can't remember if we've got a marked queen in this hive or not. I think we've got a very slight mark on the queen. Mm. She was supposed to be marked, but the marking seems to be coming off of these this year. This year has been terrible for colonies doing their own thing. Yep. And that's because we're having an awful lot of, of bad days interspersed with a few good ones. So when we get a few good ones, the bees rush out, bring in loads of food, and then all of a sudden we get the bad days again, and they're confined to quarters. Yep. If we had a consistent run of good days, the bees would get into the mode of producing honey rather than producing, um, thinking about swarming. Now, we're doing two things right now. We're looking for the queen, and we're looking for queen cells. We see queen cells, we'll cut them out. We know there were at least three queen cells in here yesterday. Got some eggs on this frame.
It's just the sort of place where the queen would be refilling mm. these spaces with eggs. At least the ones that you want to spend some time on checking. Filling this space up with honey. They certainly are. This drone brood at the bottom. When you see that drone brood, check them carefully because they're really good at hiding those queen cells. A little cup on the bottom queen there. Cup there. Nothing going on in that one. Look what I've got. Uh -huh. I've got the queen. There she is. There she is here. Nice tiger stripe. Yep. Okay, queen. so our queen is here. So, just for now, I don't have an empty box, so I'll go and get it empty. Okay. So having found the queen, she's going to be put into this little safe box just for now. And now, things happen relatively quickly. Yes. We've been through these frames checking for queen cells. We'll continue to go through them. Now we've got an empty space there. It all becomes quite easy. We did cut out queen cells yesterday, but here we've got... Yep, I think I saw some on the other side too. There's an egg in there. Let's see if we can see an egg in this one. Yep, there's the egg. So these are called charged queen cells. So we're setting them back. Oh, to not yet. <laughs> oh, <inside>. yeah. <laughs> Boy, just in time. Yep. Check both sides of the frames here. <laughs> and look out. Oh, what's how this would be full of royal jelly. Look at that. Full of royal jelly, about a quarter inch deep. And here's the queen larva right there. This queen cell is almost capped. Not quite. Again, half an inch deep. Full of royal jelly. Get to the Okay. Conzel's moved. Honey. <clears throat> okay. So I'm just going to move this to one side. Already got about 25 30 pounds of honey in there. Usually, going to be honey supers with 60 or 70 pounds of honey in them. Likewise, here. Now, we have to go through this just to check to see that we've, whether we've got queen cells or not. But what we're going to do, make it easier and avoid more bending down than necessary, we're going to take this super, we're going to put it up top here, and we're going to take this super and put it down here. So this is going to become the new brood chamber. And in this brood chamber, we're going to put our queen with the brood that she's got, a couple of frames of drawn comb, and if you don't have some drawn comb, try and get some drawn comb. Take uh -huh. frames of honey in your brood chamber and extract the honey from it always useful. It's like gold dust having the opportunity to have some drawn out comb ready to use for purposes something like this. The rest of these frames are just foundation. So they are going to go, we're going to take this drawn comb, and we're going to put them pretty much in the middle. And the queen, and with what little brood she's got, is going to go in, in here. brood, got the queen, double checking that there's no queen cells. Queen is busy laying eggs in here. We'll put eyes on the queen again. And she is 
even when you know the queen is not there, she is right in the middle. Okay, yeah, she got her? Up here. There we go. Look at her. Look at all beautiful. those bees attending to her. Nice. Okay, so she's going in the middle. Down there. And we're going to put a queen excluder on there to hold her in place. And then we're going to do something weird. We're going to put the honey super there. Now, this is empty. You know, it's just throwing combs. Okay. Now we're going to put this brood chamber on, but we have to go through it to make sure there's no queen cells in it. I would say for weight wise, this feels like it's got about 20 pounds of honey in it. Maybe a bit more. It feels like it's got about 20 or 30 pounds of honey. We're just going to make sure there's no queen cells in here. See how my Saskatchewan bees are staying nice and calm they compared are. to doing it at your hive? Thing? That's right. I do have one Saskatchewan hive, and they are super sweet. My other ones, not so much, but boy, they're making honey. No queen cells, no bird. So what's going to happen is these colony, these hives here, I mean these frames, are going to become the, the next, the first honey supers. Uh, even, even they'll put honey in here well before they put it in here. Because as the brood emerges and they backfill, oh, oh, oh. yeah, I'm shaking off just to double check. <laughs> check Look at that. that out. Look at that. I was shaking the bees off to double check. I wasn't missing them. Oh. Okay. And we're going to continue. When they make swarm cells, they make 10, 15, 20 sometimes. Best about this. Shake, it, shake it off. Quick check. Nothing there. And I've even seen them make sure you check the edges. I've yeah. seen queen cells on the edges of mm -hmm. the frame, almost down in the seam. I have some drone brood here, so we're going to cut it off just to get it out of the way. And the double benefit of cutting out drone brood is you're probably cutting out mites as well. These preferentially, the mites preferentially will parasitize drone brood. So, colony benefits in that regard. Even though they don't like it, it irritates them. It does irritate them. Cells. Both sides are coming. Okay. That tasted good, actually. <laughs> I always said I want to try real jelly. I just did. Um, it's actually quite tasty. Yeah. Now when we come back in here in a week, we're going to find queen cells scattered amongst the brood. As opposed to swarm cells, which tend to be hanging on the edges, the queen cells on these will be emergency supersedure cells. Because the bees were going to act up here something like there is no queen and then they'll be drawing out queen cells on any four-day-old larvae they can find. Right. By the time we've gone through the hive after a week, we've gone through all the four days. There will be no more four-day-old larvae up here. That one, Cap? No. Nope. Because we're going through every week with a spot of them. Yeah. Hopefully. I'm going to step back, because I'm, I'm full. Well, I have a, <laughs> a sharper hive tool. <laughs> So again, these, these upper brood chambers are now so far away from the queen, who's way down there. They may think they're queenless. Yeah, part of the hive acts one way, part of the hive acts another. Yep. It's uh, bizarre, really. Yeah. Looking for queen service, hive got a lot of drones on this side. An old bad comb. Oh, there they are. Yep. There they are. 
hide them so good. Now, if we were to miss one of these queen cells, the colony could swarm because they'd have a queen cell nearly ready to emerge. And we don't want that to happen. So we're making sure that every queen cell is being removed. Done and we've already been through this one looking for queen cells. Oh, it's heavier already. Oh, you think it's heavy after, now? <laughs> yeah, a lot heavier after a honey flow. Certainly will. Now, when I set up a denarii split like this last year, I harvested 125 pounds of honey from it later in the year. So it's a way of making a colony that wants to swarm into a monster hive. That can't, that won't swarm, and produces loads and loads of honey mm -hmm. for you. Now we just need one more frame to go in here, and uh, I'll get one, and then we'll be done with this demary manipulation. We were lucky we found the queen on this one. Um, if you can't find the queen, what we end up doing is shaking all of the bees down into that lower chamber. And boy, they do not like that. They boil right out of the bottom because all of a sudden you've put all the bees down in that bottom chamber, which crowds it right out. But that is the other way of doing it if you can't find the queen. There we have it. There we go, Demari manipulation. And what's gonna happen now is this brood chamber, the queen's on a single frame here. We've put a couple of drawn combs around it so she's got somewhere to put stuff right away. She's gonna get going to town, they're gonna go, where the heck is all the brood? And she'll start laying as fast as she can. The bees will start clustering down here and drawing out comb as fast as they can do. And hopefully as soon as they finish that, they're gonna get up here and start drawing that honey super out as well. In the meantime, all this comb and brood, the brood up here will all emerge. As it emerges, they'll backfill and they'll put honey up here and they'll only have brood downstairs. It's called the Demari manipulation and it is a great way to build up a monster beehive. Okay, so from now on, our videos are going to be package bees, progression, and Damari Hive progression. All right, good. This one went so nice and calm. Nice and calm. All right, we'll see you folks. Take care.